Welcome to another course of our BIW fixtures. For this video, we will be picking up this topic about the design requirements and guidelines. So uh, this is basically related to what are the uh, things that you need to keep in mind that is the guidelines and what are the requirements from the fixture and the parts and what are the things that you simply uh, need to follow the protocols and all that stuff we will be discussing here. Okay. So in this video, we will be have starting with the uh, GDNT that is geometric dimensioning and tolerances. Then we will start with the positioning system, then the fixture and guidelines. Okay, so these are the guidelines that you will need to follow. And these are the systems and the metrics that we use uh, to achieve these tolerances. Okay, and to uh, function properly. So GDNT and so that is a geometric dimensioning and tolerancing is basically a system for defining and communicating engineering tolerances. So what a tolerance is basically, let's say if this is a slab, okay, and you need to drill a hole at this location. Okay. And what I say is this, uh, you will give the dimensions as to, uh, let's say it is five mm from this corner. Let's say this is our reference. Uh, it is five mm to, in height and then it if you move towards this side it is a 6 mm okay so 5 and 6 mm is the exact location of the center of this hole according to your design okay but when you are drilling it manually you know how uh, drilling is done you take a drill and then you uh, make a intent at that location and then you create a hole or you can use a CNC machine for that purpose but then again, the bed, the center of the bed should be exactly at this center. That is 5 mm towards this and 6 mm towards this. So that is the, this, uh, these 5 and 6 define the location. But what happens is the drill bit or the hole is not exactly at this location. So let's say if, uh, this is the position that you need to create a hole or this is the center of this hole. The It will get... Um, the drill bit can go either in this direction or in this direction or it can uh, be very in this direction or in this direction so there is a variation so let's say if this is the hole that you want to create and it can go in this direction and in, in this direction so similarly it can also vary in these directions so basically how we represent it is we represent it by a larger circle you can say and the dimension let's say 0.2 mm so now this means that the diameter the radius is 0.2 mm which means that the drill bit can be anywhere between in this uh, 0.2 mm radius circle so i have i hope you are uh, getting it if i want to drill a hole here so this is the uh, suggested tolerance or the minimum tolerance limit that we can afford which means that the center of this hole can either be 2 mm towards right or 0.2 mm sorry not 2 mm 0.2 mm towards right or 0.2 mm towards left or 0.2 mm or in above and below direction or basically in this circle or you can say in this circle anywhere within the circle is okay okay which means that our uh, profile or this hole is at accurate location so this is something about the gdnt how it function okay so let's uh, see more uh, the now we have it is it uses a symbolic language on engineering drawings and computer generated three dimensional solid models that explicitly describe nominal geometry and its allowable variance so by nominal geometry is like for the exam in, in the previous example like i uh, took 5 mm and 6 mm so let's say i want a hole uh, that is in 5 mm from this axis and 6 mm from the bottom side from this side it is 6 mm and from the vertical side it is 5 mm so this is the exact location or you can say the nominal geometry so it also defines the nominal geometry or and its allowable variance uh, variation okay and the allowable variation was uh, the point plus minus 0.2 mm as I said, it can be anywhere within this 0.2 mm radius circle, the center of the hole. So it defines both the nominal geometry and the allowable variation in that uh, geometry. And this is the uh, common format of how you mention this uh, 
these the nominal geometry and the allowable variation like as you can see this symbol represents diameter okay and this symbol represents perpendicularity we will represent uh, we will look into these later on these are called uh, gdnt symbols okay then we have a and b which are the reference planes or like let, let's say i said that this these were the reference plane so i will name it a and i will name it b so now this is the reference plane a and this is the reference plane b which were the two sides that i took for the reference of this of the location of this hole so they, these are some references now they can be any reference or you can take any feature of your part and use it as a reference okay so this is a common format of the gdnt where that you specify in your either 2d drawing or even in your 3d model as well uh, the GD, gdnt tells the manufacturing staff the staff which perform the actual manufacturing operation like the cnc operator let's say and the also the machines uh, that what degree of accuracy and precision is needed on each controlled feature of the part okay so that is what we discussed and as here as you can see the same example from you have uh, two planes that are taken as a reference first is the reference plane a and then we have the reference plane b because uh, as you can see the center the location of this hole the center of this hole is taken to be uh, 10 mm from this plane that is uh, plane b and 5 mm in this direction from plane a okay so these are the two reference plane and again the you can place your bid anywhere within this circle and it is allowable and the radius the, uh, the diameter the radius of this circle is 0 0.02 mm okay which means that it can be the center of your bit can be at a maximum 0 0.02 to the right 0 0.02 to the left 0 0.02 to this uh, or anywhere within this circle so this is a common representation of the geometric dimensioning and the meaning of tolerance you can tolerate this much variation GDNT is used to define the nominal that is a theoretically perfect geometry of a part and assemblies to define the allowable variation in form and possible size of individual features and to define the allowable variation between these features so that is this is why uh, the understanding of these uh, dimensioning and tolerances was very crucial for your part to be feasible and also within the required uh, standard so like i said uh, there are multiple uh, gdnt symbols here okay and we have multiple categories uh, basically these symbols are re uh, used to uh, define something like you said uh, like you saw there uh, and this is the kind of a box and we have the perpendicularity which indicates that the uh, we are talking about the perpendicularity between two references a and b okay and the variation or the allowable total lens okay similarly here we have multiple uh, categories the first is the form that specifies the form of the uh, surface or, or the profile that we are talking about then we have the profile we have orientation uh, between two parts or two components or two lines or two features or two sides or anything related to that particular part or locations and a run out okay and depending upon the uh, coming to these so let's say we in form we have these four characteristics the first is the straightness which define how straight a line or a surface is okay represented by this symbol then we have flatness represented by this symbol we have circularity cylindricity then in profile we have profile of a line this indicates the profile of a line and this indicates the profile of the surface then in orientation we have angularity perpendicularity parallelism then in the location as you saw in the previous slide this the symbol was mentioned when we were talking about the slab and a hole so it was talking about the position of this hole and that is why this symbol was used which was indicating that we are talking about the position of that particular hole where that hole needs to be machined or drilled so this was about the location position concentricity symmetry symmetry and then we have run out that is circular and total run out so these are the geometric symbols uh, that you should keep in mind it makes you easy to it makes it easier to understand what the um, 
model is conveying or the information is being conveyed through uh, 2D drawing or the 3D model. Uh, okay, so moving on to the positioning system, there are multiple positioning systems that are used. So the first one is RPS or reference positioning system. The RPS uh, registration principle also known as uh, RPS reference point system principle okay, is a positioning method that defines some RPS points which are usually six points on parts and build the model coordinate system by 3 to 1 principle. So then restrict the models six degrees of freedom. Now uh, the, the degrees of freedom are basically the degrees of freedom is the number of parameters of the system that may vary independently like uh, there you can you know that there is an absolute coordinate system like that let's say this is a point okay let me erase it so i say that this is a point or a, let's say a ball in space now how do you define its position okay well, if i ask you how do you define this position then what uh, the correct way is you can consider the corner of your room and the ball is in okay and then the three sides you can consider them at x y and z axis okay uh, this will be the corner of your room and then you can consider this one to be the x axis this one to be the y and this one to be the z this is how we usually define it and then depending upon the location from the x and location from the y from the uh, z and then from y you can say that this is the particular position of this ball in space okay so, and now uh, the about the degrees of freedom is how many variables that you need to fix in order to fix the position of this ball and like if you i said that there are three coordinates x y and z and any object can move along x move along z move along y both in uh, both directions and then it can revolve around x revolve around z and revolve around y so in total uh, six motions are possible so we need uh, six degrees of freedom okay so these rps or reference uh, uh, rps reference point system principle uh, is a simple positioning method that defines these rps points throughout a part okay so like let's say i have this uh, square and i will may, uh, specify some reference points uh, which would be enough to locate this uh, part or locate uh, the features of this part and we can check their accuracy also so that is why rpa system is used uh, every cad modeling software uses this rps system to define and position the 3d model or part now if you look at this image here okay there is this is the front uh, door of a vehicle and as here as you can see we have one two and three rps points Okay, so these are the reference points which define the location. So this needs to be in the same orientation. That is the angle between them has to be the same. Uh, like let's say uh, I have defined these three points. Okay, and you all know the exact coordinates of these three points. And then I simply um, uh, scramble this part. I change the orientation and the position. Now if you know the exact coordinates of these reference points, it will come to the same orientation uh, no matter what so this is how you define the orientation and the position of a part using rps or reference positioning system once these rps points are established they can be used to check the final manufactured part for its accuracy and finish now what i mean by that is Let's say you design this door panel, okay, and then you have also defined these RPS points. Now, after this door, after this door panel is manufactured, okay, you can simply cross check with your uh, model, and you can simply check this uh, reference point. You can create this reference point and scan that manufactured door and check that the uh, reference point are at the exact location that they were in the CAD model, and hence you can compare your manufactured part with your designed part uh, that is to check the finish and accuracy of that part so that is why uh, that is the one more thing that they can help us with this reference point this reference positioning system similarly to the rps we have plp that is part locking position 
PLP is a datum position of hole or matching part position in an assembly. By fixing a PLP position, we can measure all other dimension with respect to the PLP. So that is basically simply you are uh, defining a datum or a reference or you can say a zero where you can measure your values from. Okay. PLP points or uh, positions available with GDNT drawings. So these are also given along with the GDNT drawings or the 2D sketch. Next is the car coordinate system. Uh, don't mind this error. I will change it. Okay. So we have the car coordinate system. Uh, the car coordinate system is the origin of the car or vehicle. Okay. It is the origin uh, where you can define all the multiple components as you can, as you all know that uh, when you are designing, uh, the car consists of several thousands of components which are assembled together. And how do you define these positions? You use the car coordinate system and every part have a fixed location in this coordinate system. All the BIW child parts or components uh, in a car or vehicle are positioned with respect to the car coordinate system. With respect to the car coordinate system, we can find assembly or part position in a vehicle. Okay, So that is why this car coordinate system is very crucial and important. Now let's talk about the guidelines. What are the things that you need to keep in mind uh, while designing this or while measuring or using the checking fixture? First is the gap. Now we can maintain interchangeability, conformity and repeatability for mass and batch production. Uh, the inspection by maintaining same gap throughout with respect to part surface and geometry. Gap in part in a fixture is maintained by resting a part on the part resting pad. So uh, this is a part resting pad as you can see this one which helps to maintain a, a certain fixed amount of gap between the BIW parts and the fixture. So this much amount like 3 mm uh, here uh, should be maintained. So that is one thing, uh, the gap which is used by the, which is maintained by using part resting pads. Then we have flush. We can maintain interchangeability. Again, the conformity, interchangeability and repeatability that is of major importance in mass or batch production. Uh, when you are running the inspection of the parts that are mass produced uh, that uh, by maintaining a same or a zero flush at trim edges flush checking at the trim edge with surface extrapolated to be minimum 10 to 15 mm so this is the biw part or the car uh, part component or the, of the car body and this is the flush checking here that is flushes are basically at the end edge uh, if they are molded or pressed they the corner simply deforms or extends a little bit we call this a uh, flush okay so for that you can check it here using this fixture again and as you can see here we have a 3 mm gap mark okay uh, it can say it clearly says here 3 which means a 3 mm gap mark and trim line flush mark here this is the minimum gap then the flush should be within this uh, limits it should not be touching the edge here only then you can uh, say that the component is checked and it passes the guidelines. Next is the hole checking. Um, we can maintain again interchangeability, conformity and repeatability for mass and batch production by maintaining same or within tolerance hole size. Hole size in part and fixture is maintained by locking position by pins within position and size tolerances. So you saw in the construction we have locking pins as you can see here these are the locking uh, pins which are used to hold the position and check the position of the hole like uh, when you lift it up it will simply go at the same location where the hole was meant to be and if the holes in the part are at the same location it will simply uh, easily be inserted into that uh, which indicates that the holes are at the correct position Then we have part resting. We need to maintain some gap or clearance throughout between the part surface and the fixture. That is you cannot have a rubbing condition. The whole surface of the fixture and the whole surface of the part cannot be touching each other. That would result in excessive wear and tear of both the fixture and the part as well. You don't want the finished products or parts to be uh, scratched or deformed 
during checking itself so for that we need to maintain a gap okay but the part geometry varies continuously uh, there is we cannot say the part is straight okay uh, it have it may have different profiles and complex shape as well so in order to maintain the required gap rest pads are placed between the part and the fixture surface before we have we clamp that together so before this clamping uh, when the clamp is it is unclamped we place a pad here uh, which would be resulting in a minimum clearance between the part and the fixture surface and after this uh, pad is placed here you can simply uh, engage the toggle clamp then we have the part clamping to achieve the part geometry constant everywhere and to lock one of the degrees of freedom for quality inspection we need to hold the workpiece or part at required clamping force and generally we achieve this with the help of these toggle clamps so, uh, so let's say you have the fixture ready you have maintained the gap by using those uh, resting pads okay and you have checked the clearance and also the flesh uh, with the boundary itself but uh, to properly check it or to properly scan it needs to be change its orientation and needs to you know move around using the handles provided in the uh, our fixture and so in order to make sure that our part stays at the same location you need to hold and you need to have something to press press it down okay so that it doesn't move uh, just to hold it down and for that purpose these uh, toggle clamps are used so this is how you move the handle in up and down location so this is uh, an open uh, the clamp would retreat and if you slide it like this it would hold down the our part like this so this is the clamping area where the clamping force is applied and this is the toggle clamp